Hi everyone, my name is Toronto B Star and welcome to my first ever crafting video using air dry clay. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make these beautiful clay ornaments. So let's get started. If you can pause here, you would see all the materials you would need and I will show you a brief summary of what you would need here. So you need a surface to work on, I'm working on a tile. I'm using a rolling pin which is made out of the, from the female, a blade or a cutter. Uh, you need a wire cutter, pliers, eye pin, which I already cut already, so here I'm showing you. And you would also need a set of your clay tools, crafting tools, and the clay of your choice. Today I'm working with new clay. This is my first time working with a new clay. It's a pottery clay, and actually it's my first time working with any sorts of clay, actually. I really want to work with polymer clay, but I thought, you know what, let me start off with something a little more different because I don't think I can afford all the stuff for polymer clay and stuff. So here I just cut off a, ch a part, a piece of um, the new clay, which also can be, it's an air dry clay as well as um, can be fired in a kiln. And here what I'm doing is I'm just massaging the clay, kneading it and just conditioning it, which I doubt you actually need to condition it too much, but I think it's just to smoothing it out and really for me to know exactly how to use the clay itself. So, as you can see, it's quite smooth and soft. It's really good. It makes your hand kind of dirty, obviously, because it's pottery clay. So, here I'm showing you how to make a bowl, the orange bowl. So, what you start off with is a nice circle bowl, and then push your thumb inside. And as you can see, I was digging it in, like with a hole, pushing it down, and then working on the base now, making sure my finger is inside where the hole was and spreading out the edges to give it a wider depth as well to the bowl. Now as you can see I'm working on the edges making sure that <coughs> it's round. I fold in some parts together to make it a round shape and as you can see there's a lot of cracks and still a little bit of cracks. So what I do is end up folding it as you can see and making it a little bit more smoother. There's a lot of um, cracks that forms from this and notice so what I do is constantly um, smoothing it out the edges and the inside and the sides all the way around it to make sure that it works the way I want it to. Also I do leave some of the um, cracks in because I actually like how the look is and it gives us it gives off a very handmade vintage sort of look so I really like it and um, I think for my first ever clay video, I think I'm actually really proud of it. I actually like it a lot. And, um, so as you can see, I'm still smoothing it out. As you can see, you can see now it's more smoother than before. I've been working on the cracks a lot. So I make sure that the smoothness is around everywhere. And the cracks on the, s on the top part really does not bother me. But if you do want to fix that, then I would suggest you continue to smooth it out and I noticed also when I was working with the clay it was starting to harden so what I would advise you to do is to add a bit of water to soften the clay and then when it soaks up a little bit just leave it for about a few minutes and then when it soaks it up then start massaging it again and smoothing out the parts that you want to make smooth. As you can also see the edges are not even either some side is taller other side is not but I like it so Here I'm just smoothing out the edges on the side and the base of the bar. And now we're going to move on to the blue tall bars shape pot. So you again you start off with a bit of clay, depending on how much you want. I just got a bit, same size as before, and roll it out into a circle. And then I make it into a cylinder shape or a log, you would say. And um, making sure both sides of the log have a flat surface so it's square on both sides you see can you see how I use my finger and my thumb to fold that and then can you see this bit and then I use my thumb to press down like now where the part that I want to form the hole for the pot making sure the other side of the base is still the same 
and not change at all and then again I smoothen out the edges, the side, the base, everything the way I want to and making sure to work and also fold in the edges at the top so that it creates a smaller and smoother, a little smoother and um, honestly saying when I was actually working on these crafting videos I did not know what I was doing I was actually going with the flow because I had no idea what I wanted to make and the thing that I really wanted to make was something like in the foods like cuisines and things like that but I thought maybe I want to start off with some pots and bars and small things like that and um, which I enjoyed a lot I liked it a lot I think it was really <laughs> really fun and I, uh, I bought two other types of clay, one's called air doll which is really soft and light which I will try out and make some craft from that and I also got clay deal which is from the same brand Dead people new clay but just um, a little different in kneading okay here I'm gonna start off with making the um, pendant that you saw at the beginning so first of all you start off with a bit of clay a little smaller than what you would with the first two and then you flatten it down like that so that will form the center of the flower get another clay turn it into a bead shape and turn that into a teardrop shape as you can see then merge it in with your clay and you can't continue to do that throughout the making sure I mean you can make it any size you want I chose to really use any size actually but you know if you want to make it consistent make sure to make it consistent in the shape and how much proportion you use and here I'm smoothing out the base of the back because when I placed it down I know that only my top part was smoothened out and joined together but my bottom wasn't that's really important to make sure all sides are joined together you don't want to make any mistakes and have something that you don't want so here's a good uh, footage of showing um, me showing you how to make it really smooth and into the shape that you want this was really soft by the way when I was working with it it was really really soft as you can see I added a bit more now and again I'm still smoothing out the edges making sure all the petals are joined together with the base as well as with each other as you can see it really doesn't take um, that much work I think the main thing is the time because you would need a lot of time to, co to construct and merge and create and uh, honestly saying it wouldn't take that long here I'm using um, I used a blade to give it a rougher edge but didn't come out the way I wanted so I smoothened it out I noticed I didn't use none of my carving tools this would be a great time to use your carving tools but um, I think I used it for a little bit or something here you see the changing video of the lighting because I forgot to add in my eye pin and I just remembered now so then I added it in and also still worked on like making sure the pieces are joined together make sure your eye pin is in good and here I'm going to just show you quickly what I've made so far and now it's time to paint so you will need water, some acrylic paint for this type of clay you should use good acrylic paint which I did and a palette, paint palette where you're going to put your paints these are from Wilkinson, you can use any type of acrylic paint the acrylic paint white and the other two was gold and silver and of course the ornaments that you want to make so here I'm using cerulean blue, they're both two different kinds but 
same in color. Uh, I used two tubes because that one was at near the end of its time, so I used as much of it as I can, and then I squeezed out the other one a little bit. But when I compared the color, the color was a little different compared to the other one. And that was the vermilion, and that's a type of orange color. So that will be for your bars. Here's crimson red. And sap green. So yeah, I'm just showing you all the colours that I'm using. I don't know if you can tell through the camera, but the blue, the two blues that I use I don't look the same, but they are actually the same. And of course I use the white, the acrylic paint white, to change it around. Okay, so now we're going to use a flat brush to start painting on our creations. As you can see it's all dried up now, that's why it's, gonna, it's shrunken in the clay when it was wet. And um, starting off with the blue, that I used before, the cerulean blue, and mix the two blues together. I'm sorry about this part, it lags a lot because um, I didn't know that <coughs> my video, I had some problems with my video, so and it started to lag a lot. I had no idea why, and I had to re record it as you can see, it's a recording from a different video. and. Um, I mean it worked when I played it but it just didn't work when I was when I put the video on my editing software. It was really strange. But anyways, if you wanna skip this bit I would not blame you too, so you can go ahead and skip this bit. Um it's pretty much me just painting only the side of the of the vase because obviously I don't want to get paint everywhere on my hands and everything so I make sure to paint just the side and because this paint dries up really quick which I was really glad about I was able to paint pretty much the inside as well and uh, making sure that I covered all the sides and the cracks that's another good thing about this clay, that it absorbs the paint really well and you don't have to use a lot of the paint to make the colour intensity the way you want it. Of course if you want it to be a lot less intense, just make sure to use less of the paint and maybe mix it with a bit of water, that way you can get a lighter version of it. Um, so I'll leave this one to dry because um, Now it's time to decorate the pieces. So I'm using sap green and metallic gold paint. Um, I'm going to start off with my thin brush this time and on to my blue vase and I'm going to start using the gold paint and 
you just draw any pattern that you wish and desire. I literally did anything that came down to on top of my head, really, like, um, some of the strokes that I did, I didn't exactly want it like that, but it still came out the way it did, but I was still happy with the way it came, and I like the uniqueness of it, and, um, yeah, I like the metallic paint. I think um, it gives it a really good decorative design. And you can design it exactly how you like it as well. So for the top part of it, I wanted to cover it in gold as well. So I used the gold paint while I st stuck my finger in the centre so that I can keep it in place. Um, obviously, I just painted it while it was still... Um, wet around the side obviously you can wait until it dries up and then continue painting so once i finished with that i went moved on to the orange piece and this time i started off at the top so that i can hold the edges because of if we see some more wider and thinner and not taller so it won't give me a depth if i hold it in the center after when i did that i wanted to de decorate the edges and i decided to do some dots so I just added dots everywhere, some nice gold dots, and again different thickness, some small, some tiny, some big, and then touched up a few of the edges on the side. Then I moved on to the pendant, I'm using crimson red, and I'm going to be using the sap green, so I'll start off with the crimson red, and um, at first I want to draw a flower, so you can see it starts off as a flower, but I changed the design a little bit and make it into a, a rose instead. Like it just turned out to become more of a rose to me, so that's when I add in the highlights. And here I'm still continually thinking that it's still a going with the flow kind of pitch um, drawing. I really did not know what else to make at the center. Then I've added some green leaves, so this is where the sap green came in. I lightened a little bit of the sap green with the white because it was a bit too bright and um, too dark. Of course you can use any tone you want and you can make any design you like, obviously. Um, I just decided to do something floral and yes, whatever just came into my head basically. And as you can see the paint is not that thick, so once I put it down, you can already see how quickly the flower at the centre is drying up. So it's really good acrylic paint. And um, here I'm adding just leaves on the edges as well, not just on the stemmed one. And then I touch up on it by adding a bit more to all of them, a bit of green to all. And make sure that it works. Then I repaint the centre because I wanted it a little darker and the way it came out I actually liked it a lot and um, next I added in the pink highlights so as you can see there's the pink highlights and now it looks more like a rose to me I'm just like oh it looks more like a rose and I liked it so there's the finished piece and here I'm just adding a jump ring. Once you've finished you should end up with a finished piece like this. So I hope you all enjoyed that. This was my first ever crafting video. I really hope you liked it. Please subscribe if you would like to and comment below your thoughts and any requests you may have. Although the only thing I would advise is please know animals or peoples as I don't do those kind of things. That's the only thing. Anything else I would do. Like flowers, pots, like you can see, pendants, jewellery, anything like that I can do. So thank you again and take care and look forward to my next next video. Bye.